We, as we recently announced, we're moving the Australian Youth Water Polo Championships to April next year. Uh, so we're very grateful for the support and the flexibility of Tourism Events Queensland and the Brisbane Economic and Development Agency who have, have allowed us to move the event from January to April. Uh, the move to April will allow us to maximise the chances of the teams from Victoria and WA in particular that still have some border closures to, to make the event, which is really important. Um, it also, we're very fortunate next year in that the school holidays around Easter next year align across the country, which is very rare. Uh, we need a two week window to run this event so that all states can get there. And we're just very fortunate next year that over the Easter period next year, that does align. So um, very grateful. Uh, also really pleased to advise that all of the hotels in Brisbane that we've negotiated, we um, have agreed to maintain the same rates that they had for us in January. Um, those rates will be the same in April, which is which is great. We're very appreciative of that. So um, the other the other reason for the move to April, obviously, you know, COVID impacted, but uh, it increases the chances of us trying to get an international team here to have our test series. So uh, we're looking forward to a really big event in April. Um, we're also very thankful for Water Polo Queensland and Water Polo New South Wales, who who would normally run their uh, their state championships through the Easter break. Um, we're working with them to try and make sure that we minimise the impact to, to all the events um, and very uh, grateful for their support. Through that, well, the Australian Water Polo League, uh, we're still working through that one this year. We've got a meeting with the clubs this week actually to, to discuss that. Uh, at the moment, we've got four or five different options on the table. Um, we currently, you know, just as of last week, the WA borders have um, have now opened to all bar New South Wales and Victoria, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, but we've got options on the table from the full 10 week season that we had last year, right down to an eight day event um, in a, in a con <clears throat> congested format with all the teams in one location. So we'll work with the clubs over the next couple of weeks to try and um, finalise what, what version we do run with. The Olympic teams at the moment are all working really hard in their home bases, you know, supported by the National Institute Network. Um, our coaches and support staff have done a great job working with the athletes, keeping them engaged. Um, the resilience and, and perseverance and determination that, that both the players and the coaches have shown over the last sort of six to eight months has been phenomenal. So to go around the grounds, if you like, and give a little bit of an update um, is that the QAS have made a decision in Queensland that they will continue to support the women's program right through to the Paris cycle, but they uh, will no longer support the men's program. Now, we, we only have a couple of um, nationally categorised athletes in Brisbane at the moment, and so that's sort of the, the reason for that change from the QAS. Um, the athletes that are in the mix for Tokyo will continue to get individually supported through the QAS, but they won't have a men's um, QAS water polo program. So where Water Polo Australia and Water Polo Queensland are working together at the moment to um, co-fund the employment of a, a coach to oversee the development programs and male pathway in Queensland, and we hope to have that advertised in the next few weeks. In NSWIS, NSWIS made some decisions uh, a couple of months ago that they would reduce the number of scholarship holders down to 30, so that'd be roughly 15 and 15 per gender. Um, we've worked with them over the last couple of weeks to um, increase those numbers slightly to accommodate um, the players that are nationally categorised in, in Sydney but still haven't been able to accommodate all of them but um, there'll be some announcements in the next few days from NSWIS about their scholarship lists. And then in WA there's been a, been a lot happening in WA um, and we're working very closely with Waterfly WA and Waste to, to finalise what that uh, partnership looks like. Um, but what I can assure everyone is that um, water polo still remains uh, a key part of, of WACE and they will continue to support water polo and WA as will Water Polo Australia. I know there's been some, some stories around that, that WACE were withdrawing all of their funding and Water Polo Australia were withdrawing all of their funding, but I can assure you that that's not the case. Uh, the nature of the WACE support currently is that it is largely in, in services and support. So sports science, sports medicine, pool hire, uh, provision of services to to the uh, categorised athletes. Um, the investment that Water Polo Australia make into WACE largely goes towards the coaching staff salaries. Uh, it doesn't cover all of it, but it makes a, a large contribution to that. Um, and so that, that will continue, but the configuration of that funding um, and the configuration of the programs is undergoing a review and some change. 
National Strategic Framework is a really exciting project and we've been working on that for eight or nine months now. Started back in February uh, of this year. Uh, we did kick that off with a with a survey to a lot of our members and received nearly a thousand responses to that survey, which was great. Uh, we also engaged in a number of workshops. Um, we then had state steering committees uh, that were formed by the state boards and, and a national steering committee, which had a person from each state steering committee on it. And then our board and our staff um, at Water Polo Australia um, circulated and, and went through various iterations of what the national strategic framework would look like. And that went back and forth and round and round a few times. Uh, but we've now landed on a, an overarching national strategic framework uh, for water polo in Australia over the next decade. Uh, which is really exciting. It's the first time that, that Water Polo has had that overarching framework with an aligned uh, mission and vision for the sport. Um, each of the states and Water Polo Australia now um, are working to develop operational plans that will take us through to June 30, 2022, which is sort of phase one, uh, where we're, we're really focused on building capacity and or building on the capacity and capability uh, that we currently have to set us up to grow the sport through the next phase, which will sort of be 22 to 25. Um, so really exciting and we're hoping to get the National Strategic Framework uh, and the Water Polo Australia Operational Plan out um, to everyone very shortly. And I want to you know, thank everyone that contributed to that along the way. We've been very um, thorough with the process and engaged a lot of people. Um, we also now have what's called the National Executive Group, where that's myself and our CFO, Adrian Cornish, um, and all of the state execs. We meet fortnightly. Um, and we, one of our main roles is to oversee the delivery of the national strategy across the country. Um, given that we all have different roles and responsibilities within that framework, uh, it's critical that we're all on the same page and talking and helping each other out, sharing ideas, uh, what's working well in, in WA, can Queensland can adopt that and vice versa. Um, so we're really keen to continue that. Um, and can, it, it's a critical role for the leaders of our sport um, to deliver that strategy going forward.